Hey everybody, it's Scott Steen with winnersandwiners.com coming to you from the Ernie Harwell studio deep in the bowels of the Winners and Winners Sports and Entertainment Complex to bring you today's Deep Three. As always, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. All the cool kids are doing it, so what are you waiting for? And uh, once you subscribe, cool part is you get notified every time we do one of our new videos. So make sure you check that out. And speaking of checking it out, check out our, our websites, winnersandwiners.com and statsalt.com for deep dives into every single game going on in America every single day. And of course, don't forget to tell us what you're playing. Leave me some, leave me your thoughts in the comment section. You guys have been doing a great job Let me know what you're playing. And I know you guys have been hitting some, so that's uh, very, very cool. we got three sports going on here. College basketball, uh, uh, well, we got the NHL, and we got NBA, and we have MLB. So we really have, uh, if you count uh, college and pros, you got uh, four sports going on. So I know there's a lot of stuff going on out there. Maybe you're tailing me. Maybe you're fading me. Maybe you say, hey, I don't like your picks, mister. I'm going to fade every one of them. Well, there you go. That's certainly your prerogatives, and we'd uh, we'd like to know that you're doing that as well. So if you hit them, and, uh, and, uh, and, and I don't, then we'll give you a shout-out. And if you hit some of your own picks, we'll give you a shout-out. So, uh, yeah, let us know what you're on. Maybe you got a little soccer. Maybe you got a little soccer from the EPL and uh, other spots over there in Europe with names of teams that I struggle to pronounce, which is always fun on my part. So, uh, let's get right to it and do a quick recap of a yesterday. We uh, eh, kind of had, a, kinda had a, an iffy day. We went 1-2. and two. However, we did hit a plus 175 as we got Detroit in there. We had the Minnesota Twins on the run line. Yes, we knew that uh, Homer Bailey was not good. Homer, not good. Go! Oh! But, uh, you know, what we didn't count on was Kyle Gibson being even worse. Um, you know, Homer struggled. He did his thing. He gave up three runs through five and two-thirds. However, uh, Kyle Gibson gave up five to the runs, five runs to the Royals. So that was uh, that was not good at all. And... As we as we as we uh, as we predicted, the Royals bullpen did melt melt down, but the Twins just couldn't quite get that second run across the plate there in the eighth inning when they were when they had scored their runs, and uh, we end up uh, we end up uh, failing to cover the one and a half, and we also had the San Diego over, and those two uh, pitchers uh, pitched a lot like Degrom, and uh, and. Um, the uh, and Max Scherzer on opening day, uh, it was Lucchese and uh, uh, some other terrible some other terrible pitcher that I'm sure will be uh, just dreadful next time out when we're not fate when we're not playing them. So, anywho, we go one and two, but we lose uh, uh, we, we lose uh, about about a uh, forty uh, a little less than half a unit. We just we lose point four uh, units on that one as it was uh, uh, plus money on the Minnesota run line, and we laid one fifteen on. Uh, San Diego, so yeah, that's uh, not great. Lose 215, win 175. So, like I said, we lose 0.4 units, and on we go. Oh, no, on the premium side, oh, a couple of dreadful beats. Shocker, uh, over on the premium side as well. We had the uh, we had Philadelphia against the uh, against the Nationals. Philadelphia trailed that whole, whole game, and then they finally put together a four run eighth inning to take a two run lead. And uh, they come up to the uh, the bottom of the eighth, they give up a run. They've got a runner on second with two outs, hit a comebacker to the mound. Uh, pitcher throws the ball to first base, and the first baseman looks like he's uh, never caught a baseball before as the ball just goes off of his glove, down the right field line, and the tying run scores. But wait, it gets better. As uh, Washington comes to bat in the bottom of the ninth, uh, we have uh, we see um, Robertson come in. And uh, remember when he used to uh, pitch for the Yankees and didn't suck? Hmm, good times. Uh, he gave up a single. And then, uh, in an absolutely Royals-like uh, performance, he gave up three straight walks to walk in the winning run, and the Washington Nationals beat the Phillies by one. Arg. And then we had uh, we had Orlando to uh, cover the uh, thirteen and a half point spread, and they did it. They won by fourteen, so we actually squeaked one out. And then in the nightcap, we had the Portland Trailblazers, uh, Charlotte Hornets over. Uh, we had the over 217 and a half. Uh, they, they came out and did exactly what we were counting on them to do. They put up 120 in the first half. All we got to do is coast home. What could possibly go wrong? Well, I'll tell you what could go wrong. Um, Charlotte 
could score 10 fucking points in the third quarter. And uh, even though they doubled up and scored 20 in the fourth quarter, it was too little too late as the Charlotte Hornets put up a uh, positively Virginia Cavaliers-like 60 points in the second half. Yippee. So we go one and two, a couple of hard luck losses. So on we go. Let's take a look in Major League Baseball tonight as the Kansas City Royals travel up to the Motor City to take on the Detroit Tigers. Detroit is a, uh, actually we've got it. We've got a pretty much a uh, pick them on each side here as each side is listed at minus 105. Uh, chances are those odds won't stay the same. Uh, but for now, uh, Detroit, you can lay 105 and pick up a hunji on the Tigers. And that's what I'm looking to do as Junis goes up against Turnbull. And this is uh, what I like to call Operation Fade the Royals. Uh, Jake Junis is a young guy with great stuff who still leaves too many pitches out over the plate. Uh, last year, he gave up 182 hits and 177 innings, and he lasted just an average of 5.2 innings per start. And that, my friends, is bad news for a Royals bullpen that has an ERA of 7.73 so far this season. Uh, light the fire, bring in the gasoline crew. Uh, meanwhile, Turnbull isn't great but he is just the kind of slightly below average pitcher that the Royals inexplicably struggle with, and I think that happens again tonight. Uh, worst case scenario, uh, Tigers come back late and win it against the Royals in their last at bat. Give me Detroit minus the 105, and we're uh, we're not we're not quitters. This hasn't been our best uh, this hasn't been our best college basketball season, but it doesn't mean we're going to stop now. I think we've got just. Uh, I think we've got six games left, and two of them happen tonight as uh, Lipscomb goes up against the Texas Longhorns there in New York City, uh, looking at the total of 143. Um, and a note that this is going to be a battle between two hot teams. Can the Horns repeat their defensive uh, stoning of the TCU Horn Frogs from the other night? Can anyone on the Texas team slow down the Bison's Garrison, Matthew, Garrison Matthews, who's averaged an unbelievable 28.3 points per game in his four tournament contest. Can Lipscomb stop the inside out thrust of, Os of uh, Osikowski and Kerwin Roach? My guess to all these questions is they probably can't. I don't think it happens enough. I think these teams are going to do their thing. I think they're going to get their points. Um, the Horns, they don't do a great job defensively at defending the three. And the Bisons have a tendency to get out rebounded and give up second chance points to teams that are bigger, bigger and more physical than they are. I think that happens right here. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I didn't touch the side on this one. It's possible Lipscomb shoots well enough to keep it close. I think Texas what ultimately wins. I thought that the total was uh, the side was just a little too tall. I'm not sure they cover, but I do like this game to go over the total of 143. And finally, looking in the CIT as the Wisconsin Green Bay Phoenix take on the Marshall Thundering Herd up there in West Virginia on Marshall's home court. Looking at the total of 168. Guys, I think it's once again, I think it's too high. I think these teams are both uh, over bet as far as the totals go. Uh, they get, uh, people get tended to be drawn in by the shiny object, by the big numbers that these teams put up. But we're going to play this a uh, couple of serious trends right here for the Thundering Herd. The under has cashed in three straight games, all the tournament games, six of their last seven, and nine of their last 13. Plus, um, as far as Marshall goes, the under is 6-0. and The last six times the total has been higher than 160. Meanwhile, the under has come in three straight times for the Phoenix and nine of their last 12. I'm riding the trend right here. I'm going to get down on the Wisconsin Green Bay and the Marshall Thundering Herd under 168. The uh, Texas Lipscomb over 143 and the Detroit Tigers minus the 105 and at the end of these three contests you guys can join me we'll gather up our tickets and we will head back to the window all right let's uh let's take a look at the uh at the shout outs here by the way if you want to get uh, even more of my picks including uh the cool thing we do with the afternoon updates as we uh we sent we send out updates we look and see how the games are being bet and we give uh, either updates on our plays we've already picked, or we give brand new plays. Um, make sure you check out the premium plays. Scott's premium plays uh, comes out to uh, 
it's about the, uh, it's a little less than a cup of that fancy coffee that you're stopping at the drive-thru to grab every day. And uh, it's, a, it's a hell of a deal because not only do you get picks, you get access to me. So if there's a game that I haven't handicapped, you're taking a look at it and you like to get my opinion, you are welcome to ask me questions all, the, all day long during the day. So uh, check out the premium plays. Uh, check out, go over to Winners and Winners. There's the information right there on our fancy new graphics. So there you go. All right, so on to the shout-outs. Uh, let's start with Romeo Seymour. He said, Tigers! <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of exclamation points right there. Uh, five of them, I believe. Uh, he said he money-lined that some bitch. <laughs> that's excellent. Uh, and that's exactly how he spelled it. Some bitch. Uh, cha-ching! He said, thanks, bro. Absolutely. I love the... Uh, I just again, I thought that was a, I thought that was a value play. Uh, the, I think the Yankees have been, uh, have been over, have been over back because you know they're the Yankees. You're always going to pay your Yankee surcharge, and that means you're going to get a little, uh, a little extra love on the other side of it. So until the Yankees get back to full, full strength, until they get their bullpen squared away with with Batances back, etc., um, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably fade them a lot. And I, I didn't, I don't hate them again today. I think, uh, uh, were they playing Baltimore again? I uh, think Baltimore's plus 190. I didn't make an official play on it, but, you know, if you want to take another shot at Baltimore plus 190, knock yourself out. I don't think that's a terrible play at all. Uh, Dustin Finley, he had uh, the DePaul money line tonight as the uh, Blue Demons came through in overtime after uh, squandering a big first-half lead. Super Cisco, he had the uh, he, he had the, the, Pistons, the Pistons Pacers 205 and a half. Um, however... Uh, Super Cisco, you forgot to tell me which side you're on. So unless you were betting that they hit exactly 205 and a half, um, I don't know if you won or lost. Uh, so let me, let me know to, let me know today if you had the over under there and I will give you a, a retroactive shout out if it has been earned. Uh, Borno had the Raptors minus two and a half. He had the Mets on the money line and, uh, says now he knows what goes by the, uh, oh, oh, he's got a little one for EJ here. He says now I know why he goes by the Rainmaker. He was crying after watching his dollars wash away on that TCU with the under pick. Yeah, TCU just absolutely shat the bed there, my friend. I did I did not see that coming either. Uh, Borna said he's busting balls, but you know what? Sometimes balls deserve to be busted because I know, Borna, you'd be giving props to the Rainmaker if he hit it, but you know, this is a tough business. What have you done for me lately? And uh, if you didn't do shit for me yesterday, then you've done nothing. Uh, he also had the Reds under 8.5. Good play there as well. Uh, Hammer and Hank, he had the Nugs, minus five. And uh, Miguel, he's talking about his uh, his crappie. He said the, the ones that he showed there, his biggest crappie was uh, two pounds, seven ounces, but five of them were over two pounds. Now, I don't know how many of you people fish. I don't know how many of you people fresh freshwater fish for crappie. But if you're, like, from the Midwest or, or the northern part, uh, a two-pound crappie, that's a hell of a fish. They, uh, they grow a lot bigger down there um, in the south as they have the bigger growing season. Plus, uh, and he was telling me this, they haven't spawned yet. And April 1st, man, for, for the crappie not have spawned yet, uh, that's some fucked up weather in the winter. So the water temperature must still be down as I guess they're just starting to come in um, on the bank. So uh, nice job, Miguel. That's a, that's a hell of a string of crappie. I don't think I've ever caught a two-pound crappie. I don't think I've ever, uh, you know, we, we, we nailed some down there when we used to go to Toledo Bend. I don't think I ever got one of the big ones. We just got those little schoolies. So uh, nice job, man. That's a, And that's some good eating. Good eating. Um, it gets a nice... Nice uh, slabs of fillet there, so it's a beautiful thing. So, uh, nice job, Miguel. Uh, Cody L. He had uh, Milwaukee plus one and a half. He had the under eight and a half in that Brewers game as well, and he had the first half um, under four and a half to start. I don't know what game that was. Uh, oh, the probably the, oh the same one. Okay. Oh, so that was all from the Brewers. Okay, there you go. Uh, Cody was all over the Brewers on that game, and they all took care of business. Eric T. <coughs> he had the uh, the Brewers plus one and a half, the Cards plus one and a half. Well done, my friend. Um, he he's playing the system. I don't know if he's I don't know if he's laid it out yet. It's pretty cool. Uh, his system record, and this is no lie. We've been tracking it. It is fourteen and one, everybody. Um, and I'll tell you what it is. I I think because I, I think it was okay because Eric talked about it. It's very simple. He takes the, the two games that are the closest in, uh, as far as the odds go, the, 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 the two most competitive games, and he will take the underdog and lay and, and take the and take the reverse one line, the, the reverse run line, uh, getting a run and a half and laying the wood. And uh, yeah, it's 14 and one 
so far, everybody. So that's a uh, that's a pretty fine system there, my friend. I hope it hope it sticks with it because uh, I tried to kill it. I got I got on it today, and uh, even not even I could kill it. So that's how you know it's good as it goes two and zero today. And uh, Eric T also noticed that the uh, uh, the he had the twins on the money on the money line, and eh, that was the play. Obviously, I got I got greedy. I got greedy. Didn't lay the wood. Wanted to pick up that value, and it and it hurt me because he knows also that Homer Simpson is trash. Uh, God, <laughs> that that by the way that makes him one and twenty. Uh, it, it, it makes his team one and twenty in the last twenty one games he has started. Uh, welcome to the Royals, my friend. Uh, C Dub had Chelsea minus one and a half. He had Roma uh, Fiorentina over two and a half. Napoli, Napoli, and the over two and a half. Lecce on the money line. MM, Emin, and Ajax over three and a half. Ibar and Rayo Valent Valencano over two and a half. Huesca and Celta Vigo over two and a half. And the Montpelier money line. My goodness, um, I've seen I've seen guys. At the grocery, I've seen guys in the meat department at the grocery store that didn't butcher that much. Uh, my apologies to anyone that follows those teams and actually knows how they're pronounced. All right, uh, the Legion of Picks. He had the uh, Reds for the win. Stack left. Said the 76ers have basically shut it down for the rest of the season. MB is out. Love the Hawks right there. Nice job. Mikey B had Ottawa, and uh, then I think he bought some points. He had DePaul minus four, so that ended up being a push. He had San Antonio plus five, and he had the Bulls plus twelve. So I think uh, I think we had some teasers and buying some points there, Mikey B. Well done. Uh, Kent Peace is going to have to tail the deep three today. Had Minnesota yesterday, so let's keep it going. And he also had DePaul in the first half, and that cashed out as DePaul played very well. I think they were up by twelve at halftime, as they looked like they were cruising. But as we all learned today, just because you're up at halftime, uh, really doesn't mean that you're going to win your bet. So uh, nicely done, Kent. Way to play DePaul in the first half. Kyle Z, he's another one that notes that Hosmer, or excuse me, that Homer is trash. <laughs> uh, not, a, not a lot of Homer Bailey fans out there, I'm taking it. Uh, he had the Twins total, team total over four and a half. And he also had that uh, nice plus 175, 174, depending on where you got it, on the Detroit money line. And lastly, we got a... Uh, a shout out from Carl M over there in uh, in Beantown. He just wanted to say hi from Boston, and he said that his, uh, his Red Sox have started slow this season. But don't forget, uh, lunch is on him when I get to Boston. I'm absolutely excited about that. Have a little chata and uh, and have some of the delicious fresh seafood. As long as I don't have to drive in Boston, Carl, I'm okay. Man, I have driven in like probably the top. 150 population cities in America, and Boston is my number one least favorite town to try to get around. It doesn't have the worst traffic, but it has the most fucked up traffic. That you'll, it has the most fucked up streets because it's not laid out in a grid, you know, like a lot of cities. It's kind of laid out, sort of like a by the ocean with curves and shit. And you'll be on one street, all of a sudden it turns into another street, and you have no idea what happened. So, uh, God bless you, Carl. I'm gonna take you up on that lunch. This uh, take you up on that lunch when I get that way, brother. And I will uh, absolutely. You can drive me around and show me some of the uh, some of the sights, and uh, that way we won't get lost. All right. So uh, as always, you guys have been great. Um, love it. Keep putting the comments in there. I will. Uh, I'll check them. You guys are funnier than shit, and you're making some great picks. So uh, yeah, hang in there. We got uh, college basketball season coming down the home stretch. Just firing it up on Major League Baseball, and we're getting ready to get rid of the silly season here in the NBA and start the playoffs where we can start capping that shit again for real. So um, until we meet again, everybody, thanks for dropping by. Thanks for doing your thing. And uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. All right? You guys take care. Bye-bye.